but I was rounding these numbers up and they're all the same. Think about this. One out of three millennials who are living with their parents, one out of three do not trust the President of the United States, one out of three do not trust Washington, and one out of three do not trust the stock market. So I guess when push comes to shove, they say, oh, the heck with it. We're just going to be with mom and dad and just hope this horrid world passes us by. Honey, I'm talking about you. Anyway, to our Fox Biz All-Stars, Jesse Jane Duff, Scott Martin, and Kate Rogers. Jesse Jane, what's going on here? I've never seen such a jaded group of young people. Oh, well, I don't understand that our economy has created such a demise, and yet we're enabling it on the same time. We're, we're losing our sense of urgency among young people because they know they have a fallback. They know they have a scapegoat. And the, and the baby steps have gone from age two all the way to age 34. So we have, have to get that sense of urgency back. Otherwise, our economy is going to remain sluggish. All of these millennials are staying out of the job market and defaulting on their loans. Well, when you say to 34 are you saying that let's say you have an older child who's living at home with you it could go to 34 well, you know, Obamacare has allowed a lot of these uh, adults to live at home, and many of them are still living at home in their late 20s. So they're really? not having huh. the same sense of responsibility as adults like the rest of us did at that age. Yeah. Well, Kate, okay. it's all you, kiddo. All right, Obamacare is a piece of the puzzle, but guess who is at fault? Our parents, because they're letting oh, us move. Here we go. They are letting She's us looking mooch. right at you, exactly. too. Neil. Can you believe they that, are letting Kate, us the audacity? Mooch, and we're taking them up on it. I'm not taking them up on it, but I do know people when who. When I work, was your age, young lady. <laughs> they work full time jobs, right. and who they have good jobs. jobs. Some, Anecdotally, my peers. Okay. And, and the kids, yeah. And their parents allow them to live at home to save yeah. money. And a lot of them aren't trying to be financially independent. They're letting mom and dad do the food shopping and cook them dinner and all of the above. And if they're not making you leave the nest, I mean, why See, would you? I don't know if these kids really want that situation, though. I mean, when it comes to mom and dad, sure. Hold me and tell me it's going to be okay. I've got a six month old son at home. That dude doesn't even want to live with me right now, let alone <laughs> he's probably 15. Here's the issue, though, Neil, that's not being talked about very much. With the way the demographic shift has gone, with parents working longer, meaning they're older, the parents that would typically leave the workforce mm -hmm. and say, pu be pushed out, and the kids that would say, take the jobs that are vacated by the entry level right, right. folks that climb up as that older generation drops out, actually, that's feeding this whole cycle because they're staying in the workforce longer, maybe to support that kid and when that's the job the kid can have. guess who else they're supporting? Their parents, because they're that sandwich generation. So I worry, you know, for these parents who are letting their kids live at home longer, I hope your kids are going to take care well, of you now you're, you're, you're feigning worry for me. Is well, no, my, my mom and dad. Her mom and dad I'll are watching it, right? Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you know, Jesse, what I worry about in this whole process is there must be something going on for a generation to be so jaded across the board. Now, the one out of three figure applies to all the things that I mentioned, and I'm just wondering, I don't even know in terms of prior generations whether we ever got that high. I, I know the Vietnam War generation, they were very, very jaded because of the war and post-Watergate mm -hmm. even got more so. So it's maybe in the water here that we have been so disenchanted, so disillusioned that folks of all ages have lost trust in institutions. But this one hits on just a weak recovery, economic recovery basis, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, the hope and change was directed towards them. That, that was the group that voted for this administration. And essentially, they didn't see the economy rise the way it was supposed to. And many of them have defaulted on their college loans. And hence, they're going back home. But at the same time, it's the chicken before the egg. What happened first, the process of going back home or the bad economy? All of these young people have given up so quickly, they're not even driving the economy themselves. So I think the sense of urgency has been lost. I think Hope and change sounded like a good handout, and a lot of them are really realizing now there's no free lunch. They got hope and change. The hope and change, or the change was more of a moved home. Yeah. It got, it's gone up in they the last several hope years. And they're they're out of no hope, and then all you had was change, which means more of you. By the way, the, 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 the full version of this class is that two out of three are not subscribing to any of this. You know, and, and they're my kids. Anyway, um, <laughs> not. When we come back.